so the purpose of the project today is to actually add all the limbs, right? Adding the head, adding all the legs, all four legs. What I'm not concerned about is adding any tails. If your animal has a trunk, let's say you're making an elephant, um, you don't want to include the trunk just yet. You don't want to add any pieces that, that are weight bearing like a trunk. Um, another thing that I would discourage anyone from doing is if you have an animal that has a long neck, like a giraffe, you don't want to combine those two pieces together. All right, and when I say two pieces, you have the head and neck, which will be one piece, and then you'll have the body and legs, right? You'll create them in two different parts. Um, because of gravity and because of the nature of clay, things will break apart. And so you have to make the judgment <clears throat> as to what's gonna get combined today. All right, as long as your project is stable, it's not gonna tip over, right? That's what we wanna achieve today. We, we wanna put our project together, but also have it stand up, not on, not on its own. We're, so we're gonna create a kickstand. And so I have some extra clay that's ready. I've already cut it. I, all I need to do is just shape it into the form that I need it to be so that when I put my pieces together, it's all ready to go, all right? Couple tools that I also have <clears throat> that we'll be using today will actually be a water bottle or if you have a sponge and water and I have this serrated rib you don't need it a needle tool will work for slip and scoring but for demonstration purposes uh, my serrated rib will actually work a lot faster as I'm demoing all right so I'll put this image aside and I'm gonna go ahead and unbag what I have so far and what I'm doing is really just combining all the pieces together all right now last class we put a little bit of work into shaping all the pieces of of uh, limbs including the head now i would say that they like even my sculpture it doesn't look as accurate as i need it to be um you know when you're comparing accuracy on the final day it's not going to be the final day accuracy. So I'm just going to put the limbs aside. Make sure you don't mix up the front legs and back legs. All right. And what I'm going to do next is decide on the main body, right? You definitely want to decide where the backside is. All right. You don't want to mix that up. And so, um, you know, looking at this view here, right? If I make a judgment on my clay on the main body, it looks like I have a bulk of clay, right? I have enough for this part here, and I know that I'm gonna need extra clay for the neck when I mount it, all right? And then the rear, it's a little bit smaller, right? Even in profile view, when I compare those, it looks like the upper body closest to the head is a lot more bigger in mass when you compare it to the rear of the body, and that, that's just how it is for this animal and so I have a side that I rounded off <clears throat> right I rounded that back side and I have this mass here that is so I'm holding it on camera here in profile view so uh, one of the first steps that I'll do is actually combine the legs I'll add on the head last but I'm gonna go ahead and combine the legs now um, like I mentioned, you're gonna want to, you know, have a kickstand. And so I'll prepare my clay for that too. And so the kickstand, all it needs to be is it needs to be longer than your limbs, all right? So um, <clears throat> my clay, as you'll see it here, it looks like it's a different colored clay. It is different, but you can use the clay that you have. That will be sufficient. And so any clay that um, is bigger than your limbs will stand your project up. Now, when we prop up our project, the reason why we're adding on this kickstand, all right, or this support mount, is so that it it doesn't your animal doesn't stand up on its own. We don't want it to stand up on its own yet because the legs aren't strong enough. As they firm up, as we hollow our piece out, 
then it will be strong enough to hold its own weight. All right, now, this is a bare bones piece of clay. And, you know, even in our photograph here, we could see that eventually we'll need to add more clay to that belly, right? But I'm not too concerned about um, making all those changes yet. Well, what I really want to do is get my animal together so I can see where I need to add clay, where I need to remove clay, all right? So all of this is an additive process, and when you're adding, right, anytime you're adding clay, you want to have water, and you want to have a scoring tool. Mine happens to be, this is not a metal rib. It's metal, but it has serrations, right? So it has all these teeth, and that helps me slip and score. It makes my life easier when I'm demoing so that I don't end up taking a lot of time. You're not having to watch a 20 minute video. All right, so I'm scoring on the front legs. I'm also scoring on the back legs. And this tool is nice. A good substitute tool would actually be a fork. So if you have a fork that maybe it's older, right? It's one of, maybe it's uh, one of the forks that's not so shiny and you guys don't use it or you have an old set of forks, that works. Uh, even for a couple uses, plastic forks could work too. When we score, we wanna score on both sides, right? So when you're join joining our clay, we want to score both sides. And when we add on that water, what it really does is it acts as slip. All right, so I added that water. And slip, right, all slip is is it's clay suspended in water. And it's pasty. So when you get this all messy, right, it gets muddy, it acts as a paste. Now, you may have experienced this directly, but if you've ever taken a road trip and you got stuck in traffic and you saw that Caltrans folks that work on the roads, they roughen up that road, right? They're roughening it up. Or maybe you've even, you've even driven over a road where it is, uh, it's a bit rough, it's already been roughed up, but you know they opened up the road so that traffic doesn't build up. Um, you know, the reason why they roughen up that road is because they're, they're actually preparing the new asphalt that they're gonna lay down. That asphalt requires a rough surface for it to stick, all right? So this is the same concept. We're roughening it up. You know, the rougher the surface, the better it sticks. Now, you don't wanna just put your leg on there, all right? The, doesn't work that well. After you score it, you're gonna have to compress the clay, all right? So this is where, you know, pushing down your clay is really important. Push down that clay, and initially, it's gonna be a lot of clay, right? These limbs, it's a lot of clay. Now, you have to press it down, and make sure that when you position it, like I position mine so that eventually I have you know, this big thigh here, right? And it looks like it doesn't stick out as much as I have it here. So I know that I'm gonna need to do some blending, but before you blend, you wanna push the limb that you added onto the body of clay. And what you're doing there is you're actually um, getting rid of the air bubble. You know, you're getting rid of any gaps of air. And when air is heated, it eventually expands, right? When it gets heated a lot, up to a certain temperature, right? Those atoms begin moving. And when atoms begin moving inside a space and it has nowhere to escape, in the kiln, that's where these legs pop off. And I have seen it because the clay wasn't compressed enough. All right, so you can compress it with your thumb. You could also, you know, take your hand Right, really press it down and blend this, right? And when you blend it, it's, it's gonna rid, get rid of that thickness, right? Now, 
If I prop it up just like this, I'm going to create a support coil. So I have some clay left over. It's the same colored clay, different from my kickstand here. And I'm just going to take that piece of clay and I'm going to roll it into a coil. Now I won't roll out all the coils I need because coils, they tend to dry quickly. So what I'll do is I'm going to add it on now. All right, you could do this later, but I think if you do it later on, it becomes a little bit more tricky because you have all the limbs. It's more tricky to reach in there and score. A little bit of water. And take your clay, right? Just cut it to size. And again, I'm going to compress the clay. And that's going to bond the clay together. on all sides, including the inside. Like I said, compress the clay, so really push that clay into the gap so that you get rid of any air gaps. You'll eliminate any chances of those limbs breaking off because air wants to expand in small gaps. That's one leg. <clears throat> We're gonna repeat the same thing, all right? now. You gotta make sure you coordinate which leg is going where, all right? Um, if you confuse it, you might end up with, um, you know, a funky <laughs> composition. All right, so you also wanna think about the level too, right? Eventually your, your project is gonna, it's going to eventually stand up on its own, all right? So I'm positioning, you don't wanna put it too high up, Right? Because if it stands up, it's just, it's going to be really awkward. All right, so just, I think I'm going to position it right there. Okay, I need to score the other side still, so don't forget to score your pieces. The rougher, the better. Other side as well. It's real pasty now. And then you're going to want to go ahead and compress. Compress and then blend. So once you've compressed enough, when you blend your clay, it will hold it in place and it's gonna stop shifting around. Compress, compress. All right. Now the legs, they're still flexible, right? These legs should not be hard. If they are hard, right, you're not able to shape them anymore. You're gonna have to make sure that you spray them down today before we store it. We're gonna repeat the same thing underneath to add the support coil. So structurally, when you score the coil, right, on the underside, it makes the structure of this sculpture a bit stronger. And you don't want to compromise that structure by not compressing the clay. Because of that gap, and we are filling a gap, you want to close all gaps that you're filling. And all you're doing is just pushing that coil into that pit All right, now what's going through my mind as I'm doing this is that I'm not making judgments about if my artwork is gonna turn out just fine or if it looks good or not, right? My goal right now is just to make sure that the limbs are on. You definitely wanna place the parts in accurate locations, right? You are making judgments in that sense. 
but your mind shouldn't be filled with negative thoughts about if your project's going to look good or not. The objective today is to combine all the limbs and focusing on structure. And sometimes structure isn't beautiful in the beginning, right? Because it's the framework. You know, we don't have texture yet. We're not there yet. All right. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and score. I have this other leg that I have here. Let's see. You know what? You want to make sure you get your orientation correct. All right. I th actually think. Okay. I scored on the wrong side of this, which is okay. Yeah, if you make any mistakes, well, actually, you'll be all right. Because you could blend it and then re-slip and score. All right. Compress, compress. Now try to get, when you place the second, the other side, right, on that front leg, you want to try to get the same level as close as possible. So you want to level out those legs as close as you can. You want to get them to be about the same height. If it ends up being a little short, you could always slip and score some clay underneath the foot. All right, I'm compressing now. I had a student yesterday that said that she started hollowing her piece. It's not what you want to do on day two of the project. You don't want to hollow yet. We want this clay to become firm. And once it's firm enough and we've gotten enough detail, then we can hollow out. If you hollow too soon, if you add features or you compress clay like we're doing now, it could actually create issues for you. It could start caving in. You don't want, you know, parts of your form to start caving in. Okay, I got my support coil and I'm scoring on the inside pit of the front leg. Needle tool might work better for that part. All right, got enough. I'm just gonna add a little bit of water. And then press that coil in. I like to support the outside here, just with one hand, so that I'm compressing, as I'm compressing that coil, that leg won't want to separate. Alright, there we go. And we got one more leg to do. And that's this leg here. Let's go ahead, let's check out what we got. Alright, one leg is a little bit more for, for, forward. Alright, okay, I know where I want to place it. Go ahead, slip and score. water water for slip all right and then we're gonna go ahead and I want this like to be let's see it's kind of test with it 
Well, you know what? I wanted to go backwards a little bit. So that side is forward. Back. Forward. No, no. Okay, I want this leg to be forward. Okay. I was looking at my photo here. And I saw that on the left side here, right, I can make a judgment about the positions of the legs. According to this photo, it looks like these left legs, right, both sides, front and back, they're actually further back, right? The right side, the legs are pointing forward. If I look at my profile view photo, it looks like the same thing. I have this right side, right? which is the side closest to us here. These legs are going forward and I have the two back legs that are backwards. Now on a rhino, that's how that composition works. And so you wanna definitely position the legs in a dynamic way, like as I've demonstrated. Otherwise, if you know they're just all pointing in the same direction, it looks a little bit more static.